I had a thought the other day when I was listening to the, by the way, excellent podcast, Worlds Beyond Number. Uh, this is a podcast. It's a D and D live play podcast uh, featuring Brennan Lee Mulligan, Erica Ishii, Bria Iyengar, and Lou Wilson. It's just as good as it sounds, by the way. One of my new favorite podcasts. But while I was listening to it, I I had a thought. I was getting near the end of uh, the first arc, which, by the way, there might be spoilers here. I'm like, I'll, I'll try to avoid, but like, is yeah, okay. Spoiler alert, potentially. They're getting near the end of the first arc, and so it's you got these like really powerful uh, character beats. Uh, if you've ever watched any uh, Dimension Twenty stuff, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Like they they do this all the time. This is kind of their specialty. Uh, I'm getting teared up. Like it's so good. It's so powerful. But I noticed that there was kind of a lot. I mean, a lot of DM fiat in in this case. Like this is homebrew rules that they clearly could not possibly have talked about ahead of time uh in like a normal kind of campaign they they may well have for this production because they are after all telling a story uh that is meant to be uh, uh viewed by an audience so maybe they did but in a normal game you couldn't have had all of this set up ahead of time uh, where characters, you know, have their triumphant moments where they, uh, you know, they display a, 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 a burst of power and glory and majesty. And, you know, it's these, these like these grand cinematic moments, uh, that you would see in a lot of media. And I, I realized it's really hard to do that in RPGs. Unless the RPG itself is explicitly designed to encourage those sorts of moments, designed to facilitate those those sorts of moments. And I started thinking about like, okay, what kind of RPG mechanics, because this is the way my brain works, I just sort of automatically, what kind of RPG mechanics could exist in a theoretical game to facilitate moments like this. And I was thinking about like, you know, displays of power and, uh, you know, the, the kinds of mechanics that could flow from that, the kinds of limitations, the kind, you know, the, the way that you can work narrative propriety into mechanics. Cause you don't want someone to be, you know, always doing a display of power at all times. You need to limit it in some way. Uh, but how you go about doing that will deeply affect the sorts of narratives and the uh, that, that you can tell with the game and the kinds of behaviors you're going to see from players. And I realize that one of the things that I often get frustrated about with D and D, and this is this is one of those cases where like it's maybe less true in fourth edition, but it's still true in fourth edition. Um, one of the things that that frustrates me about D and D regardless of edition, is that it doesn't really have much in the way of, like, uh, uh, an intended story structure. You know, uh, it, it, D&D kind of really wants to sort of pull back and say, you tell the story that you want to tell, here's the characters to do that. And that doesn't actually really work without at without it being an addition of like a uh, load onto the GM because they then have to decide you know am I going to make up new mechanics to facilitate the kind of story I want to tell do I want to tell a story that only works within the the mechanics that I am given that kind of thing um as opposed to a game where this kind these kinds of moments these like powerful character moments where characters really come into their own where they really you know, they, they, they do the things that they are really meant to do in the moments where it matters most to the story. Um, and I think that a game that is designed to facilitate those kinds of moments is going to have a lot more power than, cause you, you, you think about, Let's say, let's say you get, you're getting to the, the climax of your story and your character needs to make, you know, that one bluff check to, uh, to, or the, you know, persuasion check to, to talk down the, the, the NPC who is opposing them. Maybe they're, maybe they're not really a villain. Maybe they're a potential ally, but they are currently allied with the villain because they don't know any better or they think it's the right thing to do. And so, you know, you have this all, this tension and the game is going to create tension by saying, you don't know if you're going to succeed. You might actually be kind of bad at this. Roll the dice. 
maybe it won't work out. And that's where the tension comes from in D&D. And yes, those moments can be really tense, assuming the DC is set correctly. Um, because oftentimes if you follow the actual, uh, uh, what is it, uh, formula for setting DCs in, in D&D, you're either going to auto-succeed or auto-fail based on whether or not you have specialized in these kind, in, in this role that's in question. Um, and so you have to, to create tension, you have to have the DC set so that there is a noticeable chance of success, but also a, a significant chance of failure. And where exactly that lies depends on, on the nature of the DM and the campaign and the mechanics. Um, and so that's where tension is created, this, this risk of failure. But I think that there is a, a greater loss of narrative buy-in when characters just sort of fall flat on their face constantly. And this happened in Worlds Beyond Number, where uh, uh, Abria's character, I think she couldn't roll above a five for like an episode and a half. She just failed at everything she did. And she's supposed to be this prestigious wizard, this, you know, Archmage Apprentice. Inexperienced, yes, but powerful. And she was just constantly failing on all her roles. And it kind of... I'm not going to say it ruined the story because these are all professional storytellers and they're extremely good at what they do. Um, but it it did it did lessen the buy-in for me that she couldn't succeed on any roles because just sheer dumb luck. And there's no mechanics in the game that say, hey... This is a this is your character's moment in the spotlight. You're not gonna fail. You are a protagonist. You know this is a this is a time for you to be automatically great. Um, and D and D just doesn't have any mechanical structures like that. And I was coming starting to think about it. And like I'm not sure that most RPGs have structures like that, and I'm not sure why. Um, I think I think that it really could. It really could be a thing where, like, you know, you you define how frequently I'm, I'm throwing spittle everywhere, um, where you define uh, uh, the sorts of situations and the sorts of moments and the frequency with which a character can do what I like to think of as a display of power, where like this is my thing, this is my moment in the spotlight, I am going to shine, dice be damned. And I think uh, I think that more games should do that for the kinds of like cinematic heroic fantasy that we often like to play with uh, with D and D. It's so warm in here. I'm I'm, I'm perspiring. Uh, so um, it's it's something that got me thinking about my next game project after Legends and Lore because uh, we're done playtesting with that, and I'm gonna be uh, doing it up as a public document for public consumption there's going to be a, a playtest phase after that uh, uh i i don't know if there's going to be a lot of changes in there but basically like th that is mostly done with uh uh production and I'm, I'm starting to like look ahead to my next game and thinking like can i like are the themes that i want for this game appropriate to the things that i'm thinking about right now with these displays of power these you know heroic fantasy moments I'm not sure that they are necessarily. This might be something that I have to archive for later. Um, but I, I do think that it would be cool to see more of this stuff in RPGs, where the mechanics are not coy about you being main characters in a narrative, where sometimes we do, where we definitely want to see them succeed in the end. Um, a lot of RPGs don't like to say the quiet part out loud. And the quiet part is, you're the main characters, you're supposed to win. Um, and I, th I, think it, it, I think more games should probably be more open about that. Uh, Blades in the Dark does a decent job of saying like, hey, your characters, uh, they're going to do a lot of risky, risky stuff, but it's okay, here are the tools to make sure you get out alive. It's not quite the same thing. Um, because getting out alive is obviously not the same as succeeding. Uh, yeah, I can't, I, I can't think of any, uh, uh, things off the top of my head. Maybe Fabula Ultima with Fabula points? Maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, I'd have to go back and reread that. Uh, for all my love of Fabula Ultima, I actually haven't read the book in a year and a half. So, yeah, there's that. 
But yeah, I think uh, RPGs should be a little bit more open about what they're about and have more explicit mechanics that say, this is what is going to happen. 